Welcome to Allegiant Stretch. My name is Tim. I'm going to be your coach today. Today, we're not going to need any equipment. If you do need a pad or a towel to put underneath your knee, that's about the extent of it. We're going to be in a half kneeling position, working a lot of hip extension, knee flexion, ankle dorsiflexion. So get ready. It's going to be an absolute doozy of a training session. So we're going to open up with cars. Again, controlled articular rotations, working on neck all the way down the toe. Take you through step by step. We're gonna do this for time instead of for reps. So you're thinking quality, not quantity. Get as many quality reps as you can, as you can in the quantity. All right, let's open up with neck. Find a good base position, feet hip width apart, nice, steady, strong position to move. Let's go ahead, bring that chin down towards your chest. Rotate towards your left shoulder, drop the ear, circle all the way around, bringing that ear to the opposite shoulder, rotate, bring it back to the start. We're gonna continue in that direction for 30 seconds, and then I'll let you guys know when to switch. Thinking about making that circle as big as you can, one mile per hour, trying to rotate through as much of a range of motion as you can. If you feel any pain when you get to that closing angle or that small angle side to simply go through a little less range of motion. Once you get to the start, reverse directions. Now we're going the opposite direction, just going one mile per hour, trying to make that circle as big as you can through each, each rotation as you can. You might find you have a little bit more range or a little bit more fluidity with movement, one way versus the other. That's, not, that's normal. We are naturally asymmetrical, meaning we have a difference from left to right. This is why we put so much emphasis on unilateral movements within our program. When you finish this rep, go ahead, relax. We're going to move it down the spine. Give yourself a little bear hug. We're going to bring our chest down towards, our, towards the ground. We're going to rotate towards your left. Drop your left shoulder. Circle all the way around. When you get to the start, keep going in that same direction. One mile per hour. Try to make that circle as big as you possibly can. Circle all the way around. Remember, if you feel a pain in that closing angle side, aka the small side, that means we have a little bit of a impingement going on. We just want to take a little bit of range of motion off. If you feel a lot of pain, you may, may need to stop entirely. But as we're going through this, try to explore as much space as you can. Finish the rep that you're currently on. Let's reverse direction. Going one mile per hour. Try to make that circle as big as you possibly can. Locking in that joint above, which would be your neck, and that joint below, which would be your hip. Only thing moving is your entire spinal column from your tailbone to the bottom of your neck. And finish the rep that you're currently on, and we'll come back to the start. Now we're going to go arms out in front, close fist, because we want to isolate that scapula. Now we're going to retract our shoulder blades back, elevate your shoulder blades up, push your shoulder blades forward, bring your shoulder blades down. If this is backwards, we're going to keep going backwards for 30 seconds. So this one direction, retract, elevate, protract. Depress and keep circling forward. Imaginary shelf our hands are sitting on, so our hands can go forward and back, but we want to avoid them going up and down. Finish the rep that you're currently on, get back to the start, now we'll reverse. Protract, elevate, retract, depress. Now we're moving a forward circle. Again, hands forward and back, not up and down. One mile per hour here. Take your time. Try to make that circle as big as you can. You'll notice you'll get a little fatigued in that mid and upper back. This just means that we're moving through a little bit more of a range or more focus than we normally do, which is all natural. As we go through this, you might find a crampy sensation. That just means we're entering ranges that we're not accustomed to and your body's trying to find a way to either accommodate that range or maybe possibly get out of it. These are now potential that we're adding into it. So the more comfort we get at that range, the better we're gonna be at that range. We're gonna move on to shoulder. Let's go left side. Point your thumb pointed straight out. The first move is gonna be up, across. Keep that thumb pointed out as long as you can. When you get to that ear, 
Start to rotate that bicep in, that thumb will come forward, then reach that arm behind. We're gonna keep that rotation going till we get to that pocket. Now that thumb should be pointed behind us. Reverse that direction, you'll feel a block. Then we start to unrotate or unravel and just retrace our steps. We're gonna do this one for 60 seconds. So we're gonna keep going back and forth from forward to back, back to forward for 60 seconds, trying to accrue as many quality reps as we possibly can. Remember, we're looking for quality, not quantity here. One mile per hour, lock that rib cage in, thinking about creating as much of a circle as you possibly can. Excellent work. Keep it going. And let's finish this rep that we're currently on and then we'll flip to the other side. Now we're gonna go right side, thumb pointed out, bring it all the way to your ear, bring that arm all the way back, reverse direction, one mile per hour here. Thinking about tick-tocking, forward and back, back to forward. As you get to those like sticky parts, the top of the shoulder, that extended position of the shoulder or when the arms pointed back, create as much tension throughout your body is the concept called irradiation, meaning that we're trying to create tension or stability to access more range in a particular joint. This is a really important concept to start to establish during CARS, that concept of irradiation, to access more range and get more out of the actual exercise tails and rails, even breathing. The more we can focus on locking in certain joints, it's a concept called centration of locking in a joint to create more stability and more output. Same concept with the radiation, create more stability throughout your body, create this almost Valsalva type of mechanism. Let's finish this rep that we're currently on. We're gonna move on to elbow. So thumbs pointed out, we're gonna flex at the elbow. Get all the way up to your bicep, hitting your forearm. Rotate your thumbs inward. Come on back down. Reverse direction. We're going to just tick-tock back and forth. And this pronated to supinated, aka holding soup, dumping the soup, for three reps here, not necessarily for time. Awesome. Once you finish with three reps, We'll bring your hands up to 90 degrees, or elbows up to 90 degrees, palm in a supinated position. Close your fist. Let's bring your fist down towards the ground, and we're going to make a clockwise circle for three reps. And then a counterclockwise circle for three reps. We're going to move into hip. If you need something stable, like a wall or even a chair, by all means, please grab one. We're going to work on hip, and the more balance and stability we have, the more range we'll have. We're going to do the same thing we did on hip as we did shoulder. So whatever leg, inside arm's going to be holding. Let's bring that knee all the way up towards your chest, as high as you can. Rotate that shin inward. Pull that knee out wide, reach that heel behind, keeping your torso nice and tall, circulating back and forth for 60 reps. This one's going to bring more attention to creating stability. So as I bring that knee out and I rotate that heel behind, that torso is going to want to dump the opposite way. That's creating space. And you'll notice that position when we get into our flexibility work AKA pails and rails. And this is trying to create space that my hip doesn't have. So I'm gonna dump my torso away to give myself the perception of having space in that joint where I'm literally just trying to find a way to compensate in that direction. So fight that now, create this active range of motion as you're going through that hip. So knee up, rotate, Bring that heel behind you, keeping that torso nice and tall and rigid, almost stoic, and then bring it around. 
finish the rep that you're currently on, and we'll flip to the other side. Bring that knee up, rotate, heel behind you. Awesome. We're going to TikTok back and forth here for 60 seconds, keeping your torso rigid, stance leg strong. Use that inside hand to give you more stability. Irradiate is that term. Create tension through your body so we can get more from that targeted joint action. Knee up, knee out, rotate, pull that heel back in. We're just going to tick tock back and forth. 60 seconds here, thinking about getting as many quality reps as you can. That sticky part, create tension. Again, these high volume sets. These elongated set, sets, 60 seconds, you'll feel some kind of tension, some side of crampy sensation, fight through. Okay, now we're going to go back down to knee. Same thing as elbow, we're going to do this for reps. Knee and elbow are same joint, ankle and wrist are same joint, hip and shoulder are same joint. So we're going to train them exact same from top to bottom. All right, so heel, hold in towards your hamstring, rotate your knee out. So now where heel is pointed in and that toe is pointed out, extend the knee. Pull that heel back in, rotate that shin pointed in, so heels pointed out, extend back in. We're just gonna tick tock back and forth here for three reps. Once you're done with three here, we'll lock out the leg. We're gonna lock out that knee because once we start to move that ankle, the more that knee is flexed, the more that shin can move or that tibia, that can alter the range of motion or perception, again, a compensation. So lock that knee out, create centration in that knee, point that toe towards your shin, heel in, toe in, make a circle clockwise for three reps. Feel all that tension and counterclockwise. Try to move through as full circle as possible. Perfect. Let's go to the other side. Pull that heel in, rotate that shin out. So toes pointed out, heels pointed in. Pull that heel back in, reverse. We're gonna go three each way there. And then we'll go ahead and lock that leg out. Make a clockwise. A counterclockwise circle. Perfect. Now we're going to go on to toe here. So in toe, feet are going to be hip width apart. Thinking about all five toes are in contact with the ground. You should be able to feel the ground. This is the biggest proprioceptive organ we probably have that we're not using. Meaning that the more I can feel the ground, the more I can use all five of my toes, the better strength from the foot up I'll have. So let's go ahead and increase the range, increase the stability, increase the function of your feet by learning how to re-educate re them by moving them. All right, so let's go ahead. Five toes are in contact with the ground. Pick your big toe up as high as you can and hold. So big toe is now elevated, four little toes are staying. Place that big toe back down on the ground. Let's repeat that again, big toe back up and back down. Let's do one more, big toe up and back down. Now big toe is gonna stay on the ground. Now we're gonna lift our four little toes up. So big toe down, four little up, back down. Big toe down, four little up, back down. Big toe down, four little up. Great, now let's lift all five toes up off the ground, so now my five digits are away from the ground, my whole heel and base of my foot is on the ground, touch your big toe down. Back up, down, back up, down, back up. Now what we're gonna do is spread our toes as wide as we can, and we're gonna try to touch from our pinky toe down to our big toe, one toe at a time, like we're piano keying down. So pinky toe first, second, third, fourth, and then big toe, all five toes back up, Second, third, fourth, fifth, big toe back down up. And then we're up again. Spread, pinky down to big toe. Awesome. We got one more drill. Let's get into an all fours position. So our base position for quadruped 
hands and knees, not just hands and knees, but shoulders stacked over wrist, hip stacked over knees. From here, we're gonna go through cat camel. Thinking one segment at a time. So pull your head up. So now I'm in cervical extension. Bring my chin down and then push my upper back towards the ceiling. Trying to pull each one of my vertebrae up, 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 up. And then you'll get to your tailbone. Tailbone will dump behind and down. Now from here, start at the tailbone. And then one segment at a time, bring each one of your vertebrae close to the ground, get towards your neck, and then elevate that neck again. And then we're just going to snake back down. And then back up. Back down. And back up. Awesome. Now we're gonna go into a second position. So we're gonna bring our hips back towards our heels. So I'm in this now collapsed position. And what this is doing is taking this lumbar out of the equation, right? So now my lumbar is completely locked in. So now what I've done is create that centrated effect or that locked joint effect. And now I'm gonna to have to get more range from somewhere else, which will come from the upper back, AKA the thoracic spine. So we're just gonna go through the same movement. Start off with extended, bring that chin down, so now I'm flexed. One segment at a time, pushing my vertebrae up and back. Go to you feel a block, and then reverse direction. And we're just gonna snake up and down, almost like a slinky going down the stairs. One vertebrae moving at a time, trying to create a smooth, gradual transition up and down. We'll go one more rep. and then we'll transition forward. Then we're gonna get down to our elbows. So now we're gonna block our upper back and now we're gonna focus on our lumbar. So extended, flex, push as much as your vertebrae as you can towards the sky. And now we'll get down to that tailbone, reverse, all the way back up. Three up, three down. Awesome. Okay, that is our car. So we're gonna work hip extension to start. Uh, if you need a towel, put it on your knee, underneath your knee, that's completely fine. We're looking to get this whole body forward while keeping your rib cage pulled down. So as we get into this extended position, try not to lift your torso because what you're doing is essentially taking away from the extender or the actual flexures of the hip and getting a good stretch. So. One knee down, be mindful of that shin is in line with that upper leg. We're gonna drive our body forward till we feel a slight stretch on that down leg side. So let's go ahead, find a good position, bring that body forward, hold here. We're gonna hold this here for two minutes. Nice long stretch from the top of the hip all the way to the bottom of the knee, just getting situated and ready to go. As you can see, it's getting a little colder here. So I'm gonna heat you up here with a little bit of a, a little bit of stretch, get those tissues of the of the hip flexor uh get the get that uh knee flexion going it's going to be a really really interesting day because a lot of these positions uh just from the context of sitting all day and then really not getting a lot of work in that knee flexion you're probably going to feel a lot of crampy so fight through push through uh let's get some good work in today and as it's getting colder we're uh we're maintaining mobility flexibility all the nine. So we are 48 seconds in. We're gonna work pails and rails here. So it's a little different than we normally do. You really get the feedback when you go into the rails of moving uh, or seeing something move like your shin or your arm when we're doing some sort of uh, stretch position there. You're not really gonna see that a whole lot today. So in terms of the pails, this progressive angle, we're gonna try to swing our knee forward pulling against the ground. So imagine there's a towel underneath my, underneath my feet and I'm trying to scrunch it up between my feet and the front, or from that knee to the front foot, right? So I'm squeezing, pulling this knee forward, creating a lot of tension in the front side on the pails. We'll ramp up to 100%. We'll hold that for 10 seconds. At the end of that 10 seconds, we're gonna go the opposite direction. So now, instead of pulling that knee forward, 
I'm trying to pull that knee back, getting more extension into that hip, right? So as I'm pulling that knee back, I'm trying to get a little bit more extended position. You might be able to sit deeper into that stretch. Just be mindful as you're sitting deeper. We're not lifting our torso. We're keeping the rib cage pulled down, almost like we're crunching. Getting deeper into that hip extended position without increasing or dotted curve or that back arch. Take a breath in, pack the air down, start to pull that knee forward like you're scrunching up the towel in front of you, 20% of your strength. Ramp up to 40, ramp up to 60, ramp up to 80. Now your safest, greatest effort and hold for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and reverse, pull that leg back, 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And now finish in a deeper stretch than you started. Rib cage pulled down, holding here for another minute. So now we have a lot more of a stretch than we started. We're going to build off of that in what we call eccentric neural grooving. So if you're here, you did our stretch last month, we're building in some new concepts. So we're getting more of this lengthening while creating tension. So what we're going to do is come out of this stretch. I'm going to say contract and you're going to go into that pale's direction. So I'm pulling that knee forward and then I'm going to lengthen it by getting into this end range. So think I'm pulling that knee forward and then I'm going to get deeper into this hip flex position by pulling myself forward, right? So as a rep would look like, stay in the stretch. We're going to pull ourselves forward while we're actively pulling that knee forward. So you're going to feel a lot of tension, a lot of stretch. You might feel a lot of pressure. If you do feel any pain at all, just take a little bit off that pales contraction or that progressive pulling that knee forward, trying to scrunch up the towel, maybe go a little bit less range of motion. Find that comfortable zone. So the cues will be contract, 10, 9, 7, 6, 10, 9, all the way down to 1 for 5 reps. All right? So let's move out of that stretch a little bit. Take a deep breath in. Pack the ear down, pull that knee forward, pulling against the ground. A lot of tension in that quad. Start bringing your body forward. 10, 9, 8, still pulling. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and pull yourself back out. Contract. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 2. Contract, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 3. Contract, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 4. One more. Contract, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 5. Okay, now we're gonna go into knee flexion. So we usually use a yoga block here. I thought it'd be better to not use a yoga block considering a lot of folks that may not have one at home. Maybe you wanna have a base of support here, but we're essentially gonna go into what we normally traditionally call in a prone position bow stretch, just in a half kneeling position. So we're gonna grab on to our ankle. If you want a base of support like I have here, completely fine. You'll feel more of a quad stretch as well. So again, now we're lengthening from the top from the top down and now the bottom up. We're gonna hold here for two minutes, trying to get deep into this quad or hip, this knee flexion, and just relax in here. So thinking about this hip extender, hip flexor, hip knee flexor, knee extender, you know, we're looking at that hip and the knee joint. The quad, the hamstring, the glute, all those things interact with each other as we're starting to sit down into squats or going down and hinging, right? So coming back to the bottom line, thinking about how do we create some sort of tension in a squat and a quadricep, and then thinking about how do we create tension in that hinge and the hamstring, and then looking at, all right, what is my ability to flex my knee, extend my knee? What is my ability to flex my hip, extend my hip? And is that limited by the range of motion that I do or not have? Right, and that's kind of the premise of why stretch is such a foundation, foundational piece of what we're trying to accomplish here, right? So we have redundant loading with squats, hinges, and if I have enough prerequisite range of motion of that knee and that hip, 
we should be able to get more bang for the buck there. All right, so we're a minute in, a minute to go. We're gonna go pales by pushing down on my foot against my hand. So we'll hold my hand into place. I'm gonna drive that foot down into the ground. We'll ramp up to 100%, hold that for 10 seconds. When we're done with that, we're gonna to try to pull our foot away from our hand deeper into that stretch position. Now you probably won't move a whole lot, and that's fine. Now as you get deep into that rails contraction, you'll feel a lot of cramping sensation. You determine what your comfortability with that is. Completely fine if you need to relax, shake your leg out, press pause, whatever you need to do. But the idea is each week you get a little bit better, a little bit better, so you get less of a, less of a crampy sensation and more range of motion. All right, let's take a breath in, pack the air down, start to drive that foot down into your hand 20%. You'll feel a lot of quad tension, so we're knee extending now. 40%, 60%, 80%. Safest, greatest, and hold for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Reverse by pulling away. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and relax. Great work, guys. If you felt a cramp, good. If you didn't, work a little bit harder, right? Do what you did, but just go a little bit harder, right? on you. No one's there. It's just you and me right now. Don't worry about what people are thinking. Just worry about getting that hamstring cramp. All right, so we're going to progress this into passive range lift or passive range holds. So we talked about last week, difference between holds and liftoffs or last month. Now I'm at my quote unquote end range. So the idea is I'm going to release whatever is holding me passively, I, in this case my hand, away from the equation and I'm going to try to hold that degree of knee flexion or that shin in place, right? So move my hand, I'm not gonna let my foot drop, hold that for a five count, and we're gonna do 10 reps on this one. So we'll do 10 five second holds, and then we'll release that foot, and then we're gonna work ankle dorsiflexion. All right, let's take a deep breath in, pack the ear down, release your hand, and hold for five, four, three, two, one. Pack, release, five, four, three, two, two, pack, release, five, four, three, two, three, pack, release, five, four, three, two, four, pack, release, five, four, three, two, five, pack, release, five, four, three, two, six, pack, release, five, four, three, two, seven, pack, release, five, four, three, two, eight, pack, release, five, four, three, two, nine, pack, release, five, four, three, two, and ten. Okay, shake that out. Now we're going to stay in this one for one more stretch. We're going to do a dorsiflexion of this front ankle. So I wanna bring my body forward. Hopefully we have enough hip extension. If you wanna take your weight, place it on that knee so we get a little bit more dorsiflexion. Keeping that heel down, keeping that shin lined up over that foot. If you're a foot anatomy enthusiast, we're looking for that, probably that second to third metatarsal is where that tibia or that shin should be lined up over. If you're not, just think shin lined up over foot. Don't worry about it, not a big deal. We're gonna hold here for two minutes. So we should feel a light stretch in our calf our soleus area, we're gonna hold this here, and then we're gonna progress into pails and rails. Once we're done with pails and rails there, and then we're gonna go into a lift off on the side, and we're gonna get the full bandwidth here, eccentric neural grooving, passive range holds, and then dorsiflexion lift offs. So we're gonna get a, just a full arsenal of stuff. Uh, so we're gonna get the full bang for our buck today. All right, so two minutes here, pails, Pressing down on the gas pedal or pushing your foot down to the ground. Rails is pulling that foot away, trying to sit deeper into that stretch by getting more into dorsiflexion. Ideally, when we go into rails, we're not letting our body drift backwards, right? So we're pulling that foot away from the ground, trying to get deeper into dorsiflex position or more of a closing angle between the top of my foot and the front of that shin. And then when we're done with that, rails will sit deeper into the stretch. Another 30 seconds and then we'll get cranked up, ready to go.
this side is going to feel really tender when you switch. So when you're in a hip flex position, it might feel a little achy. position for now probably eight to nine minutes. So think about as we transition, slow, press pause, maybe walk around a little bit. Okay, all good to take a little break in there, get some water, and then we'll switch sides. All right, breath in, pack down, start to drive that foot down into the ground about 20% of your strength. Ramp up to 40, ramp up to 60, ramp up to 80. Now your safest, greatest, and hold for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Pull back on that gas pedal, toe pull to the shin. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, sit deeper into the stretch. We'll hold here for another minute, and then we'll go into some passive range liftoffs, which will essentially be I'll move my body backwards, get my shin perpendicular to the ground, and then I'm going to try to recreate this closing angle between the front of my foot and the top or in the front of my shin, or the top of my foot and the front of my shin, by pulling the toe or that top of my foot towards my shin. So I'm gonna to try to get more dorsal, I'm gonna get dorsiflexion coming from a, a more relaxed or rested position and try to get to passive end range by now concentrically pulling or going into that rails contraction. Let's slowly move up out of there. So now I have a vertical shin. We're gonna lift that ball of the foot up, hold for a five count for 10 reps. Take a deep breath in, pack the air down, lift that foot and hold for five, four, three, two, one, pack, lift, five, four, three, two, two, pack, lift, five, four, three, two, three, pack, lift, five, four, three, two, four, pack, lift, five, four, three, two, five, pack, lift, five, four, three, two, six, pack, lift, five, four, three, two, seven, pack, lift, five, four, three, two, eight, pack, lift, five, four, three, two, nine, pack, lift, five, four, three, two, ten. Great work, guys. If you need to pause, get yourself a quick drink, completely fine. We're going to now do the same thing on the other side. All right, so we're set up here. You might feel a little bit tender here in that hip, that hamstring, all good. Line up that shin directly behind that knee. Bring your rib cage down. Drive your body forward till you feel a stretch, and we'll hold here for two minutes. If you need that towel underneath the knee because you learned the hard way, that first one's really tough, completely fine. Control your breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. Really trying to let the tissues in the front side of that hip get long, get relaxed. So when we go to these pails and rails, we have a little bit more, and then when we get to that after of the holding the stretch at the end of that rails, we have a little bit more extensibility. We can get back to more of this relaxed rest and digest type of state, and then we can go into those eccentric neural grooving. We got a very challenging block uh, right now, so as you're going through this, you know, think this is this is training. Uh, this is trying to change plastic, like connective tissue that's pretty rigid and doesn't really want to change unless there's a lot of stress or a lot of direct intent into that area. So we're targeting joints. We're creating a lot of tension around the muscles of those joints. You got to look at this as like, there's a recovery aspect and then there's a training aspect. Uh, I would put this kind of like in this middle ground of, it's definitely not as intense of squatting, hinging, pushing and pulling with external load, but it definitely is an effect of training the tissues, right? So if you cramp, you're probably gonna get a lot of muscle soreness. If you're holding these positions for a really extended period of time or giving maximal effort, you get a lot of joint soreness. And that, that's gonna have a residual supplementation, collagen, protein, creatine, aminos, hydration, sleep, eat plenty of fruits and vegetables, eat plenty of protein. You're looking for a gram per pound of body weight and you just divide that by how many meals you eat in a given day. So if you're having four meals a day and you weigh 200 pounds, that's 50 grams of protein per meal. 
All right. So think about how that plays out in terms of building up tissue, responding to the stress that you're imposing upon it from strength training, stretch. Maybe you're doing some cardiovascular work on top of it. All part of the equation. Let's get set up for some pails. Take a deep breath in, pack the air down, hold that knee forward, hold that for 20% for, uh, or of your strength, 40%, 60%, 80%. Now your safest, greatest, and hold for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Reverse by pulling that leg back, 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Sit deeper into the stretch if you can. Holding here for another minute. We'll move out of that stretch. We'll go into that eccentric neural grooving, which is pulling that knee forward, going from that more passive position to this lengthened passive end range. I guess it's not passive end range, it's more end range. And then work the rest, right? Thinking, I need to have a certain amount of frequency or how many times I train in a given week to get some sort of results, but we get better when we recover. So stress, recover, stress, recover, stress, recover. We can offset that with nutrition and supplementation, but there's still really no evading the fact that we need to have some sort of balance of what goes up must go down. And if we train really hard, we're gonna need some sort of restoration. Uh, you know, movement is medicine, but you know, the, the sake of, okay, well, how do I have a plan of this low intensity, high intensity kind of continuum, have that thought process when we're doing stretch, you're doing your four sessions a week at Allegiate, maybe you're doing some cardiovascular work on top of it. All right, let's move out of that position. We're going to pull that knee forward into a pales contraction. Now we're holding that and we're going to lengthen 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one. Contract. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 2. Contract. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 3. Contract. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, four, three, two, four. Here we go. Contract, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, four. Sweet. Okay. Let's move into that knee flex position. I'm just going to grab onto something stable. So if you want to press pause, grab a chair, grab onto something that you can hold on to like a broomstick or uh, a couch, whatever's available to you. All right. So get set up here. Grab onto your favorite ankle, or your, I guess in this case, your second ankle. Hopefully it's your, uh, your favorite. Holding here for two minutes, you'll feel a lot of pressure in that quad again because we just lengthened from the top down. Now we're lengthening from the bottom up. So we're in a pretty good quad stretch. We've lengthened the hip flexor by going into hip extension, pails and rails, and eccentric neural grooving. Now we're lengthening from the, from the knee up. So we're gonna get the full bandwidth, right? And there's another concept here that we don't really talk a lot about why range of motion is so important. Uh, it, it's this central theme of, we are the product of what we repeatedly do, the concept of specificity. And if I only load through a partial range, right? Let's say I go top of the thigh parallel and squat exclusively, or top of the knee on RDL, just arbitrary ranges, right? Just doesn't, there's no real criteria as to why that's more beneficial for something versus another. But if you constantly load that range, you'll start to develop architectural changes in that quad or that, or that hamstring from just redu reducing the range to a partial range. And you get strong there because that's where you have the most mechanical, mechanical advantage from leverage and as well as center of mass location, but the other part, it's just much, much what we call contractile units or sarcomer overlap, right? So most of the contractile units could be located in the middle of that muscle belly. So when you start to train through a full range of motion, when you start to go lengthened, you start to go proximal and distal or towards the origin and away from the origin or towards the insertion, you start to get what we call longitudinal hypertrophy, meaning that we're starting to create more contractile units 
towards the end range. And that's why that crampy sensation goes away. That's why you get more mobility or active range. It's because you're stronger at length. And you get that from externally loaded positions through a full range of motion and targeted joints like this, right? All right, let's get ready for some pails and rails. Pack the air down, start to drive that foot to the ground, but blocking with your hand 20%. 40%, 60%, 70%, 80%. Safest, greatest, and whole for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and reverse. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Woo, yeah. Yep. No one's carrying more than me right now. So I was cramping so violently right there, which is sweet. You're noticing the uh, the new lighting? Yeah, yeah I think it came out pretty sweet. Uh, if you're noticing the new orientation, don't get used to it. I'm just gonna move the the, um, the racks back to the wall over here because uh, I need that, that spacing's not really great for where the plates are located. So if you're looking for any facility design concepts, uh, always tweaking, always adjusting. So next month when you see this again, you're gonna see the rack back over here and me more at this angle. All right, so we're gonna get ready for the uh, hold. So I'll release the hand, hold that foot in place, we're trying to get as much knee flexion as possible. Five seconds, 10 reps, and then we'll go with the dorsal flexion. Back the air down, release the hand and hold for five, four, three, two, one. Pack, release, five, four, three, two, two. Pack, release, five, four, three, two, three. Pack, release, five, four, three, two, four. Pack, release, five, four, three, two, five. Pack, release, five, four, three, two, six. Pack, release, five, four, three, two, seven. Pack, release, five, four, three, two, eight. Pack, release, five, four, three, two, nine. And pack, release, five, four, three, two, and 10. Woo, yeah, yeah. Now let's get into some dorsal flexion. I'll just turn back facing you. Front foot stays intact. Bring that knee as far forward as possible. Knee lined up over that foot. Tibia lined up over the middle of, that, uh, of the bones of the foot. Holding here for two minutes, you should feel a light stretch in that calf soleus area or gastroxoleus or the back of your lower leg. <sighs> yeah, that leg is shaking. Ooh, yeah. And it's funny because you get to this like, all right, now I'm just working ankle dorsiflexion or just focusing on a smaller joint, so to speak. It doesn't feel easier. I, I don't know why. Um, maybe it's just the... Uh, emotional and physical fatigue you build up from just targeting a joint and creating as much pressure and tension in that joint. I don't know, but it doesn't feel like, oh yeah, we're done. You know, the hard part's over, uh, at least me. So, all right. So we're a minute in, minute to go, holding here for another minute. We'll go pails, pressing down the gas pedal, rails pulling up from the gas pedal. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Yeah. Ah, so it's grind so to speak so kind of grinding um grind town but it definitely comes off as like without context very odd so i don't like to say it too much but that's the explanation just going to work go in the gym and just grind no music no fancy fans now i got one so i guess you can't call it grind town um no climate control i should say just grind um but not anymore
All right, so now it's just Allegiant Labs. All right, pails and rails. Let's drive that foot down to the ground, 20%, 40%, 60%, 70%. Make this greatest and hold for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Reverse by pulling the top of the foot up away from the ground. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Sit if I can get deeper into the stretch by pushing your knee forward, keeping that heel flat. Holding here for another minute. Then we'll move out of this stretch. We'll hit up that passive range lift off. Yeah, but I think Allegiant Labs has a nice ring to it. Uh, I think that's a pretty good name. So I, you know, I'm thinking some sort of like cool little like pop out sign of Allegiant and then below it lab, uh, something like that, you know, or laboratories, something cool. I'm yeah, getting real science. Maybe I'll have like a lab code sometime and, and like beakers and Bunsen burners or something cool just to really buy into the whole experience. So, um, yeah, 15 seconds and we'll go into these liftoffs and I'll shut up. Okay, let's move out of that stretch position. So now we're more vertical or that shin is perpendicular to the ground. We're gonna lift that foot away from the ground, hold, pushing that heel in. Take a deep breath in, pack the air down, lift that foot and hold for five, four, three, two, one. Pack, lift, five, four, three, two, Two, pack, lift, five, four, three, two, three, pack, lift, five, four, three, two, four, pack, lift, five, four, three, two, five, pack, lift, five, four, three, two, six, pack, lift, five, four, three, two, seven, pack, lift, Five, four, three, two, eight. Pack, lift. Five, four, three, two, nine. Pack, lift. Five, four, three, two, and ten. All right, guys, I appreciate you guys. Let's finish up with some stretch. Thank you guys for letting me uh, go through all the updates in Allegiant Labs. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's keep going, man. Let's keep pushing through and it's going to be a great year, 2024. Signing off. Okay, so let's finish off with some breathing. We're gonna go three positions to choose from. And the reason behind each position, it, form, it formats a different way for your body in space. So if my body is facing down, if my body's facing up, it's a different gravitational effect on that, on that thorax, right? So if I'm pointing straight up and we have this negative pressure pulling air into our lungs from the diaphragm contracting, it's different when my torso is pointed down or an inverted position. Now we don't have negative pressure, we have the effect of gravity. So in a sense, I have to contract to inhale, we reverse it, we have to contract to exhale when we're inverted. And that goes into why we wanna focus on inhale versus exhale, right? So in regards to the positions, if you really struggled with internal rotation, this one, if I was cramping a lot, I felt like I had nothing, you want to be inverted. And what that does is gets a little bit more of a bias towards exhalation or that breathing out. And the position you want to do with that is going to be a inverted position. We want hips stacked over knees, just like we did in the cars, multi-segmental spine. So hips stacked over knees, elbows on the ground. Now, the more I'm elevated in my knees, the more inverted I am. So we can grab a yoga block. We can place that underneath our knees just like such. We can get more inverted. We can use books, we can use towels, we can have balance pads, do that. But the more inverted you are, the more effect you have on challenging exhalation. So if you really struggled with that internal rotation the, of the hip, you wanna focus on a exhale bias strategy, AKA inversion. The second position, well, and I know this probably feels a little counterintuitive, but stick with me, is if you struggle with the external rotation with the legs in front, will be that crocodile position, just like we did in our prone shoulder external rotation. So I'm here. And what this is, instead, I know it feels like we're inverted still, but what this is instead is now I give myself some sort of resistance when I inhale. 
So exhalation, exhalation for internal rotation, inhalation for external rotation limitation. So now I'm going to bias inhalation or breathing in because I'm giving myself resistance. So as I breathe in through the nose, I'm going to have to push my body away and I have to contract. I have to contract that diaphragm and I have to really pull that air in because I have some body weight resistance as I'm pushing it in. So crocodile if you struggle with external rotation. Now the final aspect. Final one would be a 90-90 with a internal rotation on the left side bias. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Where you want to focus on that, if you didn't really struggle with internal external rotation, but you might have felt the left side was a lot more restricted than the right side, specifically internal rotation wise, that's when you want to go a 90-90 internal rotation left side bias position. So what that will look like is I'm gonna get a chair or a wall and set up with a 90-90 breathing position. I know that probably seems confusing because we did 90-90 for our position to stretch, but the truth is it's the same 90-90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degree, just kind of a different angle, I guess. So from here, my heels are resting on a chair. I am now relaxed in this position. I wanna pull my knees there. If you have a towel or yoga block, we're going to squeeze that between our knees. Remember we talked about ab adduction. So same thing, adduction now. And then I'm going to try to pull my left heel out and then point my right knee straight back. From here, I'm going to pull my heels down onto the chair or the wall. And what that's going to do is activate my hamstrings and then get my pelvis from this anterior to more posterior position. And what that will do is bias that internal rotation on the left side, and it's gonna challenge the diaphragm to breathe against that, like what we call left AIC position. Now, torso matters quite a bit here. Remember, the lungs are different sizes from left to right. The heart's on the left side, the liver's on the right side. So what I'll do is as I'm driving my left heel out, squeezing this yoga block between my knees, I'm gonna take my left hand, place it on my ribs, and take my right hand, place it overhead. If you feel more comfortable just going inverted or crocodile, completely fine. But if you felt like, hey, I had a massive limitation on that left side during that hip internal rotation, that 90-90 position with the leg back, I really strongly suggest you go to that 90-90 position. Now, what we're gonna do from here is pause, maybe play around with each one of those positions, and then figure out which one you're gonna go from there. So if you need to stop right now, please do. Now we're gonna go into the actual breathing cadence. So whatever position you are, we're gonna go inverted crocodile or 90-90. We're gonna go into this 4-4-4-8 or 4-4-8-4 tempo. So we'll breathe in for four, we'll hold for four, we'll breathe out for eight, we'll breathe in for, we'll hold for, hold out for eight. So I'll say four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, and we'll repeat. So we're gonna find that position and we're gonna go through 10 cycles of that four, four, eight, four tempo. All right, so whatever one you wanna get into, let's go ahead and get into that now. So if I'm in a crocodile position, if I'm in an inverted position, or if I'm into this 90, 90 position, let's go ahead and do so now. Get a couple breaths in that position just to kind of get comfortable. Remember, we're always going to breathe in through the nose. We're going to breathe out through the mouth. And no matter what position we're in, whether it's inhale or exhale bias, it's still going to be controlled full air in through the nose, controlled pushing the air out exhalation. The imaginary blowing up, blowing, breathing in through a straw is going to be kind of the metaphor we'll stick with. And we're going to do that for 10 repetitions, and I'll guide you through each one. All right, so let's get that position. We're now getting a couple breaths in. Let's start to get into this direction. So everyone breathe out. Now we're gonna breathe in through the nose for four, three, two, one. Hold that air in for four, three, two, one. Push the air out through the mouth for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold that air out for four, three, two, one, repeat, pull air in, four, three, two, one, hold for four, three, 
two, one, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold the air out for four, three, two, one, and repeat four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one. Now continue on for five more cycles. Thinking about filling in as much of that air in, keep breathing. So we should be now moving into that hold, that exhale. And if you're getting to that inverted position, exhale will get progressively harder and harder. You'll start to maybe get a little bit of lightheaded, control that breath. If you need to take a break, take a pause, get out of that position for a second, do so. Try not to make yourself to the point of passing out. If you're in that crocodile position, you're going to really struggle potentially getting into that inhale or that breathing in. If you're in that 90-90 position, you'll find that left leg is going to want to move out of that position. You'll find you'll start to squirm. You'll start to contort. It'll be hard to pull down on your heels. It'll be hard to squeeze that yoga block towel or book. It'll just be harder, right? So that's the goal is to try to maintain that tempo for three, two, one. Four, three, two, one, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one. It's a great tempo to keep on your own. So if you ever need five breaths in a good position, anytime you need to do that, we'll get a huge amount of benefit getting five cycles of that, three cycles of that. All right, so we should just be wrapping up that final inhalation or that final exhalation, and we can slowly move from that position. All right, so that concludes our breathing. Really good strategy to help finish off. If you ever need to do that post-session, great up, great aspect of, of getting a really good targeted effect. All right, we'll break here, and that concludes Stretch for today.